in this video. I'm going to talk about something called Gibbs energy. Gibbs energy. And Gibbs energy is sort of a way to predict whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. So it's more of a prediction. And so in the last video, there was a problem where we, we had no way of deciding whether a reaction that was endothermic and also released, oh sorry, also resulted in a net increase in entropy. So it had a positive entropy. So it was absorbing heat, absorbing heat, but then becoming less ordered. And if the universe trends towards this, or it becomes less ordered, and tries to you know, stay away from absorbing heat, what happens? Is it spontaneous? And Gibbs energy can help. So I think the best way to imagine Gibbs energy is to imagine that you have, say, two factions. You have two, uh, two factions that are battling each other. Or you could say there are two factions at war. And this might be a bit of a stretch or kind of ridiculous, but w since we're endothermic, maybe we have a uh, faction. And we'll call it endothermia. And on the other side, because we're trying to get entropy, maybe we'll have the uh, another faction. And so we'll have somebody, maybe like old man Gibbs. Just bear with me for a second. And old man Gibbs is in charge of deciding which one will win. Because if the reaction is extremely endothermic and it only results in a tiny bit of positive entropy, then it's likely to not continue. But if, it's only, if it only absorbs a little bit of heat and results in a huge amount of net disorder, then it's probably going to continue. And so Gibbs energy, by definition, equals the change in enthalpy. So whether it is you know, exothermic or endothermic, and you subtract that by the temperature of the system times the change in entropy. Because uh, the um, conventions sign to differ, this is the enthalpy. And this is our entropy and temp of the system. So temperature of the system. And so this is all you need. You take the enthalpy. So if it's exothermic, you know that the enthalpy will be negative. So exothermic equals negative delta H. And if it's endo, it's the opposite. It's endothermic, it has a positive delta H. So if you put in the temperature of the system, you put in the entropy, and you put in the enthalpy, it's really quite simple. The Gibbs energy, Gibbs is negative. Then the process is spontaneous. That means that uh, probably, in this case, the entropy would have won out over the uh, endothermia, or entropia, or however you like to pronounce it. And so the converse is true. It gives us positive. It's likely to not be spontaneous. So that's non-spontaneous, of course. Now, what if Gibbs 
energy is neither positive nor negative. What if Gibbs energy equals zero? Then what that means is that these two parties have reached a, a sort of stalemate. Neither one can get by. This one's trying to go here, this one's trying to go here, and they're just stuck. And so what does that mean? Well, maybe you've come up with it already, but it's at equilibrium. This means that we'll have, you know, it'll be, it won't want to go further. It won't want to become spontaneous. It won't be, be negative spontaneous or like non-spontaneous. And so we will have um, chemical equilibrium. And so this is, this is pretty much all you need for a basic introduction to Gibbs energy. You just know that it's enthalpy, remember, exothermic, endothermic, the temperature. And so this means because we've added the temperature uh, variable, then this can change just depending on like, how warm the room is when you do this you know, chemical reaction. So let's say like I'll use the ice cube example once more. So we have this ice rectangle cube. And if the temperature is greater than, or, oops. So if the temperature is greater than zero degrees Celsius, it's going to melt. It'll become water. And so that'll be spontaneous. But if it's, if the temperature, spontaneous, but if the temperature is less than zero, then it's obviously not going to be spontaneous because we'll have to add something. We'll have to add external heat. Spontaneous. Or non spontaneous. And so the same is with water. You know, we could take water, and if, if it was below zero degrees Celsius, right there, then it would be spontaneous. But if we're going from ice to water, and it's less than zero, so it's like negative five, say, then it's obviously not going to proceed. So again, just because we've added the temperature here, then it can change, just on the room. So sometimes we'll have um, equilibrium. I mean, there'll always be an equilibrium temperature, but this is all you need for uh, Gibbs energy, just to understand.